This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Single Scoop with me, yours truly, your host, Krim, also known as the Asian Avenger. Uh, today, we're playing what is essentially the blue-white flyer deck, but we made it, we tuned it a little bit for best of three. So as you can see, I've got a few main deck cards like Cerulean, Drake, and stuff like that. But we're, since we're best of one, and there's it's mostly spirits, I decided I think we can totally just make it a spirit deck. I wanted to add a few things like Dovin Grand Arbiter, uh, because Dovin and, uh, and Grand Arbiter is such a sweet card in a style deck like this when you have favorable wins, uh, Empyrean Eagle, stuff like that. So even though not everything is a spirit, like, like as I mentioned, Drake and the tokens that Dovin makes, uh, it, it's still fine. And we have a single icon of Ancestry, so this way we still can pump most of our spirits and for the most part have targets. Although we do have favorable winds and winged words, a lot of flying theme things here. Dungeon Geist as a way to keep things tapped down. And like, you know, like let's say we run into any Cavaliers. Uh, Dovin's Veto, because first off, it's spiritual Dovin. So, I mean, since Dovin is here, Dovin's pretty much our commander, or for those that have played Oathbreaker, except we, we don't get to play him again. He's just our only, this, it's a one time thing. And then the spell would be Dovin's Veto. Uh, we, we essentially built an Oathbreaker deck. Uh, but then it's got Dovin's Veto to deal with Scape Shift, uh, Esper, just like to counter the board wipes, pretty much. So how does the deck work? Well, it plays a bunch of flyers. So because of that, these are the four cards that I really liked. Uh, we'll go with a little more in depth on them. Supreme Phantom, other spirits you control get plus one plus one and is flying and a one three body. So it doesn't die to shock. Has sweet artwork. And on top of that, like it, it's much like the rest of our deck. It's an anthem effect like Empyrean Eagle, except, you know, only pumping spirits, whereas Empyrean Eagle pumps everything. And, and Favorable Winds, another Anthem effect, but pumps all things that have flying and doesn't die to creature removal or a board wipe. So these three together just kind of make it so all of our small little X1 creatures become a massive army. Uh, before, and, like, I tried Safara before, and I just didn't like her because oftentimes I would never get the four flyers, and when I did, I was already winning, so there's no reason for me to take a turn off to play her. Even though it does get around things like board wipes, sure, uh, it does like delay them, so it it can be sweet as a singleton, um, out of you know against maybe control or something like that. But if they if they answer it easily, like they just bounce at the end of your turn and then they board wipe again, it, it feels really bad. So that that's the only reason why I just haven't played any. And then as Ed mentioned, Dovin. Dovin ults very quickly and has kind of been forgotten. I mean, rightfully so, because Dovin hasn't found a home yet in Standard. But maybe a blue-white Flyers deck, something like this. This feels like the type of deck that Dovin was made for. And on top of that, it just keeps making 1-1s. One -ones. And the 1-1s one -ones fly and they gain you life. And it, it, as I said, it ults very quick. That plus 1 after, like, you know, you flood the board on turns 1 and 2. Like, it, it eventually starts ulting by, like, turn 4. Um, so a very solid card. Uh, maybe maybe since it's best of one, we can go up to two. I originally wanted three, but I went down to one because I was like, hold on, I still want to try to answer more things in the format. Uh, and, and with it being best of one, I wanted to have something ready for red deck and whatnot. So without holding up any longer, let's see how the deck does in the queues. <laughs> Good luck, Papa Pasta. All right, we're going to try this variation of spirits. Looks like we're back. Let's see. Try oh, that's really good against us. So it looks like it's scape shift. Uh, it could be scape shift. It could be any, either that or just bant ramp. All right, so it's scape shift for sure. Spirit, and now we get to attack. And now we have the mana to double veto. Hopefully they don't have Teferi though. Teferi would be a huge inconvenience here. Whew. Okay, no Teferi. We didn't have that fast of a start though. So unfortunately they could just naturally get there. Just ramp and then beat us that way. Ooh, that doesn't feel great. Okay. For mana efficiency, I'll probably just go ahead and draw a card with spectral sailor that feels better than trying to dig right now okay unless of course they cast something all right 
got to cut them off their ramp. Okay. Looking decent for us so far. All right. We have them on a two-turn clock right now. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even think the, uh, the like, we have to kill them. Like, cause it'll still, they'll still give us a turn with scape shift at least. Let's see. Darn it. I should have done that first. Should have realized I could have potentially looked for something. I mean, they would be at one, which is significantly better. All right, do they have a board wipe? They do not, and we got there. All right, we're up against uh, Pinch. Pinch it, I believe. Sure, we'll keep this. No turn one play, but we do get to go into double Lord if we want. Um, what do we do about this now? Is our cat, wait, where's our cat? Uh, no, 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 we don't have a cat. Not yet. Okay, so we don't need the remorseful cleric. All right, so we are going to desperately need to uh, start playing some creatures. We miss out on a damage by doing this, but we get to play double Lord. Oh, I mean, although favorable wins is pretty sweet, but I do like the idea of going favorable wins, leave up two mana to counter like a Conclave Tribunal on turn four, assuming that we hit the mana, of course. Like, next turn could be Gideon or Benalia, but I don't think we're going to play around that. We're just going to have to attack. Whoa. Aggressive. Pride of Conquerors. Spicy. Opponent is about business. I like it. Well, we hit the mana. That was weird. What was that for? Okay, so we'll go ahead and play Favorable Wins. Hold up Dovin's Veto then? Or actually, no. No, yeah, hold on. We should, because we should play around Conclave Tribunal. If they use it this turn, then I won't play around it next turn. Because I do need to get pressure on the board again. So I'll have to go like Remorseful Cleric plus Favorable Wins. Okay, that's fine. So they have not done it yet. So Favorable Wins it is. Okay. Makes this a 4-3. I don't have any black permanents, so I should be fine. I hopefully, if we can draw a white source, I'll, I'll play Remorseful Cleric. Otherwise, I do need to prepare for whatever non-creature spell they're about to play. Alright, so the knights are paired up. Did not. Alright, so we're going with this. Actually, should we just go ahead and just don't, like try to just start swinging? I mean, it's 4-7 play this that increases... Damage. Next turn, though, they're, what are they going to play? Like, Yeah, I think I think they're going to try to play like... If they have Conclave Tribunal, it would feel pretty bad. Uh, why don't we attack first and figure that out after? That's seven. We put them on... You know what? That's lethal next turn. That puts them on lethal, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to force them to have it. So we got lethal this turn. This upcoming turn. If they do not deal with this. That's 9, 12. Okay, so that's exactly 1 over, which is okay with me. Opponents at 11. They've got Knight of Grace, Dauntless Bodyguard, Snubhorn Sentry. They just played Benalia. Now, Benalia could produce token, then they could go Conclave. But it has to be that. All right, opponent is moving into combat step. All right, that's GG's. Turns out a bunch of little flyers can get there. Huh. Feels good. Feels good. I mean, I'm just trying to go to combat here. All right, sweet. There we go. Good luck, Jared. H86. I will keep this hand. We have Spectral Sailor into Favorable Winds or Phantom. My choice, probably Phantom. And then we'll... We just need a blue source. I mean, a white source, sorry. White source to play Hanged Executioner. All right, Supreme Phantom. Phantom Supreme, whatever you want to call it. All good with me. I like this artwork, actually. Like, what a, what a sweet-looking spirit. All right, where's my Dovin, though? So then we can make it ourselves actually spiritual Dovin. All right. Favorable wins. We drew another favorable wins. So that means we currently just have two pretty solid threats on board right now. All right. We're just going to play another favorable wins. So we have seven power on board. 
Looks like they have cast down, so that's unfortunate. They're only going to take three this turn. Uh, in desperate need of a white source here. We, I know that we have more white sources than blue. Ooh, Frosca's Contempt? That's bad for us. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. We refill the board. We put out two bodies again. This way, if they play Nyssa or something on five, we can still attack them. Wild Growth Walker? That's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah. I mean, not much we can do about that. I need to draw another white source. Oh, hold on. Six damage... We know they have six mana. I don't know if I can afford to sit around though. Go to attacks first. I just don't want them to go Jade Light. You know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and play Dungeon Geist. Tap down the Branch Walker. Take the damage from Wild Growth Walker. Because I assume we are. Because I don't want to have it tapped down and use hang Hanged Executioner on Wild Growth Walker. This way, if they just play a Branch Walker, they can't attack. They have to play either Jade Light or Double Branch Walker. Finality, that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, good news is that now if they try to use Memorial to Folly, we can respond and uh, blow up the graveyard. No need to play this land yet. That's unfortunate. It's going to be painful. They gain 6 to go back to 10, so they're at 1. If they play another... Oh, yeah, they're definitely keeping that on top. We take the damage 100%. Okay, can I draw something? All right, no, that's... Let me think here. So, yeah, they can't kill us yet. Oh, boy. That's hard to beat. Gull garbage. Why? Why? Golgari. So so removal heavy. Uh, I don't know if I'm beating this, but... Or you know what? I No, I, I didn't have the mana to do what I wanted to do. I did not have the mana to do what I wanted to do. I should have removed the Wild Growth Walker. Like, this Wild Growth Walker just gained him so much life so far. No blocks. Uh, Thorn Lieutenant, sure. That's pretty good. It's a good draw. It's a very good draw, actually. So, we're just gonna go ahead and draw some cards here. Oh, that's nice. Hold on, do we have lethal? Yeah, we do. We have lethal right here. Nice. Three stripe, Mike. Good luck. I'll keep this. We have unsummoned Spectral Sailor, but we don't have anything until, like, uh, until turn four. It's considering we have a second blue source. A little slow, but let's see what we can do with it. Alright, let's see if we get unsummoned. No. Alright, good news. We have something to do now on three. So luckily that fills out the curve. Oh, what deck is this? What? Okay. We have a problem. There's something going on here. Alright, so enters the battlefield and channel has add one mana of any color. So it does not ramp it. It just allows them to add any color. Okay. We need a second blue source. Play the dungeon, guys. Get to paradise. Alright. They're ramping quite a bit here. Well, we're going head first. See what's going to happen. So that's three, four. That's four mana. If we draw something like a, a favorable wins, that would really be nice here. Sure. They have two mana up this turn. Favorable wins does a lot of pressure. Adds a lot of pressure here. That puts them down to four. And at the very worst, we can protect our... We can use the unsummon to protect our uh, hanged executioner. Okay. Sure. 
Okay. Looks like they're some kind of elemental. Nope. Not what we wanted. It's what we got. Alright, so... They're gonna blow something up this turn. I can't actually play anything, unfortunately. Like, I could bounce. Actually, you know what I should have done? I should have bounced Hanged Executioner, played it again. Yeah, because if I had done that, we would have eight even if they blow up this Blast Zone. But them blowing up Blast Zone means they're a land behind. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven mana right now. They could be playing the uh, Omniscience combo. Yeah, they are. Two, three. All right, so they don't get to put Omniscience into play, which is nice. Six, it's all the same. No, but they could blow up their blast zone. Yeah. We gotta do this. Hopefully I don't have another flood of tears. Mm. Okay, and then we do that. We can go and tap down. Like, I mean, that that's pretty much what wins of the game right now. They have another flood of tears. That's a problem. These decks don't interact that much outside of that blast zone they've got there. Oh, if you're wondering why I unsummoned, by the way, because Flood of Tears needs to see the, the opponent bounce four things back. And I didn't want to sacrifice the Hanged Executioner. <clears throat> Alright. Looking pretty bad for us right now. Because they have more than enough mana to flood the board. And we can't win right now, either. Uh. Are you sure you one of those cards is Omniscience? Maybe they don't have Omniscience. They were just using it as a board wipe. Unlikely, but... So let's see what they do here. They have Gift of Paradise. They can go... They have six mana after, though. They have three... Five, six, seven, seven. They have to spend mana to drop something down. They could just use Flood of Tears as a defensive move. Sweet. All right, I'm just going to play this anyways. doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, we played the ones that don't have flash first, so that's good. <clears throat> okay. So we're on the board again. Do they have Flood of Tears again? Okay. Is there eight health? So they play they one, two, four, five, six. They have six mana. They can't go Flood of Tears plus another spell. So it has to be just Flood of Tears. Which I they play four of, so it's it's likely they have it. They've been sitting around. I mean they also could have Root Snare, because I know this deck plays it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if they if they have Root Snare, I mean it'll be pretty like, I think we actually... No, no, that's not it right there. That almost looks like the thing that fogs, but it doesn't. Going with Convoke. Okay, they're tanking. I'm sure they're not short any possible... Like, I mean, if they needed an answer, they would play Root Snare, right? Or, I mean, they would play a Risen Reef to find a Root Snare. Okay, so they're playing this to find one now. It's problematic. Alright, so they found something. Okay, well, they play Tamio, they die. Like, they can't play Tamio. Okay, so they have Root Snare. Like, we can't stop this anyways. They have Root Snare, but... Because they wouldn't have done that if they didn't. Right? I mean, they have something to do. They have three mana up, so they can't pop Blast Zone. Blast Zone costs three to plus the Blast Zone itself. They'd need one more land. Oh, guess they didn't have it. <laughs> I am the lolorous. Good luck, opponent. 
I'll play this. We have double favorable wins. The winds would be swinging and swaying in our favor with this kind of hand. We're on the draw, so we do get an, another look at another card. We're going to need every favorable wins we find, but we also need our vetoes because it looks like they're on Sultai Scape Shift. Or Sultai uh, Yarok Scape Shift. Sure. Growth Spiral. All right. Very good. Yeah. All right, so Sultai Elementals. This is going to be a pickle. They're on four mana right now. Uh, we are not. Even close. Can't swing through it anyways. May as well make ourselves a half-decent blocker. All right. Scrying. I mean, they have black, so that means they have removal. Cameo. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Wow. That's a really good start from our opponent there. Android Crisis, they whiffed on that, thankfully. They just got Field of the Dead and an Assassin's Trophy. That's kind of a problem. Hmm. Can we, should we just concede to that? I think we're like dead to that. Actually, no, we're fine. We're fine. What am I talking about? Yeah, so they do have Yarok, so Salta Elementals. It'll be hard to beat this right now. Okay. Sure. Okay, so then next turn, I only need to hit him with one of these. They need to find something with reach, so they might just name Cavalier again. I assume they play more than one. Assassin's Trophy, they missed. Rejuvenator, okay. Lake of the Dead, alright, so we need to kill him quick. Oh no, not this again. Can't let them dig anymore, so I have to swing in the air at them. They'll probably block the one Dungeon Geist. Because I can't just swing one, unfortunately. If I swing one, they, they don't block, and then they're fine. All right, so they have a zombie. They're starting to spew zombies. But we have 14 damage, so we have them on a two-turn clock currently. Concerns are, what do they find? Luckily, we do have a way to draw cards. Ooh, we have more ways to draw cards now. Oh, that's amazing. That's great news. So they're at five. Do they have a sweeper? Do they have a sweeper? Hydroid Crisis? That's pretty good. But that's not a sweeper. <clears throat> pretty cool is that, uh... All my stuff kind of just easily goes, or like, <laughs> that actually at best trades, but it doesn't. Because we have this. Submit. So exile that. Get out of our way. Our flyers get in there. Boom! Woo! X Raisin, good luck opponent. Okay, we're actually off to a pretty strong start. All right, well, uh, not as much right now, but we'll keep this. Push the Executioner. Can't play that, so we can get to at least play Spectral Sailor here. If it's mono red, we have Cerulean Drake. I haven't run into it at all. That's why I have these in the main deck, because these are obviously not spirits. Wish it were. All right. This. Um. I'm not gonna attack because they'll gladly trade their Terramander for my Spectral Sailor. Like, it's not a good deal. Siren Storm Tamer, sure. 
Uh, we'll race. I mean, if they want to do that, I'm okay with that. Oh, no. Bye, boy. My dog, as usual, making a guest cameo. You can dive down something else later. Okay, so we need a, a white source pretty bad here. White source would come in pretty clutch, because then we can start drawing cards. Yep. Seems good. We need a white source, please. White source, please. Yes. Nice. Okay. Cool. This card does pretty much nothing, so I don't care if they block it. I don't even know if I'd protect it, to be honest with you. I'm going to start off with a Remorseful Cleric here. This way we get more pressure. Somewhat more pressure. Although there are a few cards ahead of us, which is a concern. Like, we can't do anything about a Jin, anyways. Yeah, we could have done something about this, but whatever. Block. Okay, so that has resolved. Before damage. I'll exile their yard, so then this can never grow. Or it can, but not yet. They just lost three spells. Hmm. No attacks. I think I have to leave this back. Hmm. Can I afford to take that damn? I don't think so. They can't draw cards. Like, as long as they draw cards, we're in trouble. I can't do anything to it either. Because they have Siren Storm Timber sitting on it. Drew a land. That feels bad. This might get hard countered. Yup. Sounds about right. But I had another white source. Darn. Eh, we might lose this one. Uh, when I say we might, I think I, we, we will. I mean, we need something to legitimately deal with this Terramander. Uh, I think if we had had a white source a few turns earlier, this would be a different situation. We could have at least countered that back. I guess that's not the worst, right? Just can't let them draw. Oh, that's a gin. Well, I think it's safe to say we can't beat this. We have winged words, which draws us cards. Let's see if they have a spell pierce. Okay. So I think we actually might be able to deal with this. If we can resolve favorable wind. We resolve favorable wins. I'm gonna just take all the damage. Resolve favorable wins. They draw a card, unfortunately. They'll try to counter us, so we'll have to counter back. Do I have enough to play everything? I think I do. So, yep, yep, okay, I do. I have enough to play everything. Counter, counter their counter spell. Okay. Uh, that's looking pretty good for us. No attacks, we leave it back. Let's see if they use the dive down. I'll counter the unsummon, just to force them to use another card in hand. Alright, sweet! Alright, what can we do now? Try to draw a card. I feel like that's a good, good start. Ah, that is a good start. Okay. Alright, just uh let's just hang back. I mean we could play this dungeon geist. But then that puts us in a situation where we have to trade off the hanged executioner and not really get any value off of it. At least this way we kinda get the siren storm tamer off the board. Let's see which one they target. Hmm. A little unfortunate. Well, we'll have to trade off the dungeon guys, but that's fine. They'll pop their Siren Storm Tamer. Here. We'll have to block. That was our main way of drawing cards, unfortunately, but what are you gonna do? 
Does this resolve? Does it happen? Or does it dive down? It's dive down. I mean, I guess if it's dive down, it's not the end, right? Because we can still block it. Alright. Ooh, we don't need enough. Oh, that's that's bad. Okay. Please no like curious obsession or anything like that. Alright, we're dead if we don't if we don't draw something good this turn. That would count as something good, yes. Uh you know what I should have done? I'm I'm a fool. I should have uh I should have played the Storm Tamer or Spectral Sailor. Would have had something to play. And wouldn't have had to trade that off. Alright. What a bummer. Yeah, that was, that was a misplay on my part. But they wouldn't have swung in, I guess. A trickster, a simple trickster kills us. So I can't go too wild here. They're gonna throw it, sure. Dungeon guys, please? No. We have no dungeon guys here. Luckily, if we double block, they can only kill one. We need a dungeon guys to keep this tap down. I assume they probably have all their wizards retorts and stuff right now. If they play Curious Obsession, they can actually kill two things. Oh, that's so good though. But it's not gonna resolve. Uh, it resolved? Wild. Does this resolve? Wild. I mean, we're not we're not swinging out because we don't have lethal. Unfortunately, this is giving them time to draw into something, but they obviously have a counter spell. They're just waiting for the right target. That. Got to present them with lethal, right? Yeah, sure. Fine. So we get the Terramander off the board. Can we actually come back? I mean, they must have, like, Negate then. Nice! We actually got there. Holy cow. What a win streak. Tomo 5, good luck. Uh, Mulligan. Alright, so this is the last match. Can we get there? I mean, this seems pretty sweet. We get rid of the dungeon, guys. We also get bumped up a rank, too, so... Don't mind that at all. Lead with Island... Oh, it's mono red. Ah, good old <laughs> mono red, the final boss. <laughs> Where's my Cerulean Drake? <laughs> Think about how good Cerulean Drake is right now. We have so many favorable wins. Oh, it's Cavalcade. This might actually be worse for us, right? Like, I mean, can't really do much about him. We play like Chandra Spitfire. We're gonna like take a hundred damage. Not actually a hundred, but lethal. I mean, obviously we can go ahead and just eat the Chandra Spitfire with Hanged Executioner. Well, hopefully. Of course. I know they can't let the Hanged Executioner stay. Hanged Executioner is such a sweet card. It being potential removal the turn after and putting two bodies on board is so sweet. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just try to nullify all their shocks. Hopefully we draw like a two drop. Oh, jeez. Just flinging spells, huh? Ah, like that. Just like that. I'm gonna play this. Still. Regardless, I'm gonna play this. They've spent a lot of removal. I'm okay with that. Yep, Chandra Spitfire's here. But you know what I realized? I don't care. Chandra Spitfire... ...doesn't deal with Cerulean Drake. All right, get in there. Turn after these uh, these spirits get bigger. Okay, sure. 
That's a good draw. Only this. Like, the Cerulean Drake will always stay back to block. Their shocks are offline now. Okay, a shock is online. Oh. The war boss has arrived. We're gonna take some damage if they swing. I mean, they are going to for sure swing. Oh, nice! And we get there. Well, we had a 7-1 finish. We technically lost a game because there was a disconnect randomly from the server. Uh, I don't know what happened. So we lost one, so we didn't get to go up the rank we want. But, I mean, if you want to count that, we can count it. Uh, but for the most part, it would have been a nice 7-0. and We did lose uh, to a disconnect from the server. So that was kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, the deck felt very strong. Um, I mean... In best of one, sometimes, you know, like, if, if you're playing against a deck that doesn't have any sweepers and stuff, like, you can just get wider, like, bigger than, than you know, the, their, like, entire attack force. Uh, your creatures, you can flood the board way faster than them because everything of yours is cheap. And all these anthem effects start adding up, especially when the anthem effects come on top, like, with a, with a body on top. Like, it's like Supreme Phantom, you get a 1-3 body. Empyrean Eagle, you get a 2-3 body. Things that don't die to shock, very important. And on top of that, like, we have Cerulean Drake to beat red decks. And as you saw there in the last match, Cerulean Drake single-handedly just held back Chandra's Spitfire. It, it, yeah, sure, we take one every turn, but I'd rather take one than, like, lose. So... Uh, we, we saw the importance of Spectral Sailor. Some of the games, we would not have won if it were not for Spectral Sailor. Like, e if I played a little bit tighter, we would have actually still had a Spectral Sailor against Mono Blue. So, I, I mean, I, I like the, the card, and that that's one of our draw engines. Winged Words feels medium. I think I maybe want to cut that down. I think I want to go down to two and either A, play another Unsummon, or play another Dungeon Geist, or another Dovin. Something like that. Just, Winged Words was all right. It's all right. Oftentimes, it's just, yeah, two mana, you know, draw two cards, uh, which was sweet, but eh. I feel like I, w when the deck wants to, like, just keep adding to the board or constantly have, like, you know, gas ready in the tank, like, in, in case we get board wiped or removal, like, dot deck, like, we barely got past that Golgari deck. We got super lucky, drew the Supreme Phantom off the top. Um, we needed either that or exactly a, a second, or, I mean, a favorable wins. So... The deck was fun, though. Uh, definitely give it a shot. It should help you grind at least your way to around gold like I did. I grinded up to gold with this uh, fairly easily. So thanks for watching another episode of Single Scoop. As always, it means the world to me that you all can continue to watch the content, come back, uh, show love on you know in the comments, uh, on Twitter. And, of course, thanks for always uh, swinging by my channel, my Twitch channel, and you know hanging out, saying hi. Always means the world to me. It's so cool to see you coming from the YouTube uh, content to my uh, Twitch channel and stuff like that. So thanks for doing that. And uh, really just thanks for supporting MTG Goldfish. And I'll see you at Magic Fest Vegas if you're going to attend. If not, uh, I'll see you at the next video. And if you like the videos we make here at MTG Goldfish, make sure you leave a like and a sub. And, of course, to be notified when a brand new video comes up on Goldfish, hit the bell icon. Other than that, it is I, yours truly, the Asian Avenger. Signing out. I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.